you go before I know that you've even gone to end my war. Your love becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness, and all I did was pray. to another episode of LTL Youth at Home. My name is Jory, the youth pastor of Live the Life Church, and I am glad that you are tuning in. If you are watching live, join the chat room. Let us know who's watching. And also, if you're watching live, join us at 8 o'clock tonight for our Zoom chat with LTL Youth students and leaders where we get to hang out and discuss the message. It's a lot of fun. We want to see you there. But if you're watching this at a later time, uh, man, comment and share the video to help encourage the people around you. But tonight, we're going to take the next 10 to 12 minutes to open up God's Word and allow it to encourage us. And so today, if you're taking notes or if you have a Bible, you can go ahead and open it up to John chapter 14. And if you're taking notes, I want to give you the title of my message tonight. And the title of my message is, When Will Things Get Back to Normal? With a big old question mark after that. When will things get back to normal? Is that not the biggest question right now, but let's read John chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. Now, I'm going to read out of the message translation, which is a different translation that maybe you might have. If you have it, great. Um, if not, we'll have the scripture right here at the bottom of the screen that you can follow along with. 
But he says this, this is Jesus talking. He says, I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all these things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. I love this part. Peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left. Feeling abandoned. So don't be upset. Don't be Distraught. Now, to give you some context so you have a better understanding of what Jesus is actually saying, he's talking to his disciples, and it's in an intimate moment known as the Last Supper. We find this, um, if you go and read a little bit before John chapter 14, we know that in the Last Supper, and even before that, there, Jesus had just finished washing the disciples' feet, which back in that time, and even in our time today, was something that was completely out of the norm. And see, that's, that's just something that we can relate to out of the norm, both in our lives today, but even in the disciples, we can relate. Because when Jesus stepped foot onto the scene, when Jesus was born and he grew up from the age of zero to 33, I'm telling you, he flipped every person he came in contact, in contact with their world upside down. That's who Jesus was. The moment he stepped foot on earth, he was flipping everyone's world upside down to reveal God's kingdom and its coming glory. See, for these disciples, they had a normal. They had a routine. They had something that was normal for them. For Peter, he was a fisherman. That was his normal. But then just one interaction with Jesus, just one moment, an encounter with Jesus completely shattered his normal. Can I just say, first off, our normal being shattered isn't always bad. It's sometimes good. And can I tell you something? When Jesus, when we encounter Jesus, guess what? Our normal, our old routine, our old habits, guess what? It is good that they become shattered. Because when we in contact, get in contact with Jesus, it's good that our current normal is shattered so we can take on all that he has for us. And so for Peter, his normal routine of fishing, this is what he was going to do for the rest of his life, was shattered. Because no longer was he going to be a fisherman, but he was going to be a fisher of men. And not only that, but maybe Matthew, the tax collector, who would be at a table booth taking money for the rest of his life, shattered his normal simply by encountering Jesus. But not only that, but Jesus would then go on in, in the next few years, he, he would begin to flip upside down people's theology. Right? These Pharisees and Sadducees and these Jewish believers had a belief uh, about the law and the, and the prophets, the Old Testament. And every time Jesus would come in contact with his wisdom and his authority would speak above these people and a greater understanding. And so when they would listen to what Jesus was saying, these disciples, they would think, my whole world is upside down. What I, what I thought I believe is, is upside down. This is crazy. This meant his miracles, his healing power, all these things that these disciples encountered. They, they, it was flipped upside down. And so even their normal theology, even their normal beliefs about God was completely flipped upside down because of Jesus. And now yet again, these, disi these disciples are in a moment in the upper room, in the Last Supper, eating with Jesus, having their feet washed. And yet again, they are facing another normal shattering moment. Because in fact, I believe even them walking with Jesus for the past three years, had what they had been doing, I think that could have gone normal for them. It doesn't take long for us humans to get comfortable with something, for something to become normal in our lives. And I believe even these, these disciples, they were okay with, okay, I'm not a fisherman anymore. That's fine. Oh, we're going we're gonna flip to flip this world upside down with the kingdom authority. That's, that's fine. But then out of nowhere, Jesus begins to wash their feet and tell them, hey, guys, I'm not going to be here any longer. I'm going back up to heaven. You're not going to have me much longer. Hearing those words again, yet again, Jesus shatters their normal. It was normal for them to hang out with Jesus. It was normal for them to go to bed and to wake up, to eat dinner, to have lunch, to hang out, to do miracles with Jesus. And now all of a sudden, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to be here any longer. Yet again, their normal is shattered. Isn't that how we feel today? We can relate to the disciples. That our normal, just the normal activities of going to the mall, going in passing period to another class, going to hang out with friends, going to the movies, going to the pool, going to Fiesta, Texas, whatever you might be doing um, in this month of May and, and going into the month of summer, that normal has been shattered by COVID-19. And, and now we no longer have that normal. And so we can very much relate to this idea of our normal being shattered. And one of the biggest questions that so many people are asking today is, 
when will we get back to normal? Is it crazy to say that maybe it's God's plan that we don't go back to our old normal, but in fact, God has something new for us today. I think there's beauty in the new things God has for us. And so my big question that I want to ask for you today and what we're going to discuss in our Zoom chat later on tonight, but my question I want to ask you today is what do we do when our normal has been shattered? What do you do when your normal, what, what, what has been normal and custom and, and just complacent in your life, the things that you just know that were always going to happen, the plans that you had, what do you do when that has been shattered, when it's been gone? See, we, we like normal. We like having a routine. As much as some of us um, are risk takers and just kind of going with the flow, we still have a routine and we still have something that we can hold on to. We like knowing a little bit about the future. So what do we do when our normal is shattered? The biggest thing that I can tell you today and what I want you to cling on to, hold on to today is this. What do we do when our normal is shattered? We stay close to Jesus. When our normal has been shattered, we stay close to Jesus. If this, this is the biggest thing I want you to get out of this entire conversation tonight. When our normal, when our routine has been shattered, when COVID-19 has completely stripped away our normal of our life, and now we're sitting at home, and we're now our, our, our normal routine of going to the grocery store involves a mask and staying six feet away from each other or not touching anyone. When that normal has been shattered, we must stay close to Jesus. So we, we have to stay close to Jesus, I believe, simply from this text, two reasons. Let's just make it simple. We got, we got to stay close to Jesus when our normal is shattered because when we stay close to Jesus, it keeps us moving forward. When we stay close to Jesus, when, when we no longer have a normal to go back to, he keeps us moving forward. Here's the thing, when our normal gets shattered, there's nothing to go back to. It's very easy for us when things get difficult to go run back to our normal, to run back to what we've always known. But when that has been shattered, when that no longer looks like that's going to be the future, Jesus and staying close to Jesus keeps us moving forward. It keeps us going in the same direction as God. Because here's the thing, God doesn't go backwards. That'll preach all day. God doesn't go backwards. God has no plans for us in the past. He only has plans for us in the future. And staying close to Jesus keeps us walking in step with the future because here, here's the thing that's crazy is that is that the disciples would have been totally fine healing and doing miracles in their little region of Jerusalem they, they were totally fine with that but here's the thing God God wasn't interested in staying in the past and staying there in that normal no 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 Jesus said I have to leave so that the Holy Spirit my spirit my power can live amongst all of you guys and, and, and when it lives amongst all of you guys the same way it is doing today, no longer will you stay in Jerusalem. But I have plans for the future for you not just to change your region, but for you to change the world. And that's exactly what the disciples did. The disciples were perfectly fine with staying in their normal in Jerusalem. But God said, no, no, no we're not going to stay there. That normal is shattered because I, I got greater plans in the future. And maybe, quite maybe, God has greater things in our future than he has in our past and even today. And maybe, quite possibly maybe, that this is our step moving into all the great thing God has for us. Because when we stay close to Jesus, when our normal has been shattered, we move forward. Because some of us, and I can speak for myself, that when our normal has been shattered, the first thing we initially want to do is, is to try picking up the pieces and putting them back together. So we can live back there. But guess what? When our normal is shattered, there's nothing there to repair. All we have to do is keep moving forward. And we have to trust and know that God has greater things ahead of us. That God has greater plans ahead of us that he, that he did in our past. So we got to stay close to Jesus because staying close to Jesus when our normal has been shattered keeps us moving forward and not only does it keep us moving forward but in that in that time of moving forward when we're afraid and uncertain we're like what is going to happen it gives us peace our world is flipped upside down when our normal is shattered and we are anxious and we are fearful because all that we knew it was normal has been stripped away and so we are left feeling metaphorically naked and ashamed and saying oh my gosh what do i do now guess what? 
in our time of our normal being shattered, not only does Jesus and staying close to him keep us moving forward to the greater things God has for us, but it keeps us in a place of peace. <laughs> Jesus said this, I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you peace. He wasn't just telling this to the disciples. He's telling us today. In fact, I believe he's saying that to us in all of our times when it feels like our normal and our routine has been shattered. He's saying, I'm leaving you with the parting gift, peace. And that peace is the Holy Spirit. Because this is what I want you to understand about peace. Peace doesn't come when things go back to normal. Peace comes when we stay close to Jesus. Man, you better write that down. I'm going to shout myself down. Peace is not going to come when things go back to normal. Because we can't go back because there's nothing there. Peace comes when we stay close to Jesus. Jesus is our peace. The Prince of Peace. He is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is our friend. He is the one that is our help in need. Jesus is our peace. And us staying close to Jesus is where we find our peace. Not when things get back to normal. And Jesus says, guys, we got greater things ahead of us. And it's gonna, there's going to be ups and downs. And yes, you're going to be uncertain. And yes, there's going to be times where we are afraid. But guess what? I'm leaving you well and whole. And you have me and I'm your peace. So when our normal has been shattered and when we're constantly wondering, when, when, is our, when is the new normal happening? When are we going to get back to normal? We must remember that there is no going back, but there's only going forward. And in that forward, staying with Jesus, we have peace. Can I just close with this one final thought? Because I know so much is up in the air right now and I just want to pray with you guys. Because I believe even now there's more uncertainty because back at least a few weeks ago we were in quarantine and just stay home and we knew that. But now when things are opening up, now more fear is coming up because now we're thinking, are things going to spike back up? Are things going to get worse? Or, or what's going to happen now? Should I go or should I stay? Is it too early? Is it too late? What's happening? And everything's up in the air. Can I just encourage you with this thought? When everything is focused on when are things going to get back to normal, I pray that our desire would not be for things to get back to normal. I pray that your desire would be for things and for you to focus on Jesus, to get back with Jesus. I pray for, for our generation. I pray for our world that we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to go back to normal. We would want to go back to Jesus. We would want to stay close to Jesus because our normal is not where our hope is. Our our normal is not where peace is. Our normal is not where our faith is. Our normal is not where our love and joy is. No, no, no. Jesus is where our faith, hope, love, joy, strength is all in. So I want to pray for you guys in this time where I know that our normal has been shattered, but let me tell you something. God is our cornerstone. He is our strength, and He's where we can put our hope in, our faith in. And in this time of uncertainty, He's going to keep you greater things that he has and he's going to give you peace every step of the way so let's stay close to jesus i want to pray for you guys so father we thank you so much we thank you god that you are our peace that surpasses our understanding that you are are okay that when things are messy when things are uncertain you through your holy spirit remind us that it's okay that we can trust you that you got the whole world in your hands so Father, we love you and we thank you that you keep us moving forward for greater things. And every step of the way, you give us peace to calm our spirit, to know and trust that you are in control. We love you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name.
Christ remains forever you reign your promise remains forever you reign and you are loving you are wise there is nothing in my life you cannot revive you are loving Thank you for working all things out in our favor, God. That you have plans to prosper us, God. God, that you're not going to lead us to, to failure. You're not going to lead us to heartache, God. Would you walk us through those things, God, because you love us. I pray that we can remember that during this week, God, that you can bless us, God. And anything that we go through, God, we can remember you working it for our good. But we love you, God. And we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we all say, amen. Hey guys, it's Anissa from LTLU. Thank you for joining our service. But don't worry, we still have our Zoom meeting at 8 o'clock tonight. The meeting ID number is 924-9134-8848. And the password is 045181. Again, our Zoom meeting is at 8 p.m. And the meeting ID number is 924 9134 8848 and the password is 045181. Thank you and I can't wait to see you there. Bye.